starting the timer. And here is the question. Right, if you have read and understood, can you begin your history taking? Um, hello, good morning. Hello. Morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Ishfaq, one of the doctors here. May I confirm uh, your name and age, please? Um, my name is John and I'm 28 years old. Nice to meet you, John. Today I have been asked to ask a few questions regarding your condition. Are you happy for me to proceed? Yeah, yeah, go on. That's why I'm here. Okay, perfect. All right, that's right. Can you please tell me what brought you in, here in today? I have uh, pain in my left knee. Okay, I'm really sorry to hear that about. Can you please tell me about more? Tell me about more about this condition. Like, where exactly is the pain? Um, it's in my left knee. It hurts when I walk. Okay, so can you please tell me? When did it start? It started three months ago, doctor. Okay, three months ago. Okay, did you think it was all of a sudden or it's gradual? It was gradual? Uh, it's difficult to say. I think it started like a light ache and then now it's just getting bad. Now I can't even right. okay. straighten my leg. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, is, is it there in the right knee or it, is it going upwards in the leg, downwards in the leg? Or is it there oh, no. only in the knee? I said it's left knee. It's not right. So, okay. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to... Uh, uh, it's just okay. in the left knee. It comes down when I walk. You want to walk. Okay. So, can you please tell me the type of the pain you are experiencing? Like, sharp pain is dull. It is cra like cramping. What type of pain it is? It's like a dull, constant pain. And it feels sharp okay. when I put a weight on it. Okay, right. Do you think the pain is increasing throughout the day as the day proceeds? It is getting worse? Or there is any specific time of the day it's uh, like uh, getting worse? Mm, not really. I didn't really notice that. Okay. Okay, okay. So, do you think there is anything which makes it worse or which makes it better? It definitely feels better when I'm not walking on it. Okay. But then okay. I can't just sit on the sofa all the time. Okay, right. So, can you please tell me, like, uh, how do you rate, if you had to rate the pain from 0 to 10, 10 being the worst imaginable pain, how do you rate it? At the moment, it's 4, but if you okay. would have asked me an hour, uh, maybe a couple of hours ago, then I would have said, mm -hmm. I've taken paracetamol. Okay. Okay, right. So can you please tell me how you observe, like when you walk, do you think your knee is going away? Some, some sort of feeling like that? Uh, yes, at times. When I'm okay, at times. Do you... much, then okay. yes. All right. Do you think the pain is increasing, uh, like uh, it's increasing the night time and when you woke up from the like sleep? Mm, I don't know. It's just there. It's just there all the time. Okay, right. Have you observed any uh, like change in the shape of your knee recently? It feels a bit swollen. Okay, right. I can understand. Uh, have you been experiencing any locking of the knee during like uh, walking, getting up from sitting position, anything yes. like that? 
Yes, I feel like it's when I'm trying to stand up from the sitting okay. position, I feel okay. my knee is locked. Okay, you feel the knock. Okay, have you have, uh, noticed any stiffness into your, in your other joints apart from the knees or any other joints? No, I'm pretty much fit and well. Okay, great. That's great. Have you been experiencing any fevers recently or any uh, like uh, local raise in temperature in the knees? They are no. like low. They are raised. The, the temperature is raised in the knees, or you are feeling otherwise unwell, something like that. Uh, no. Okay, right. Have you experienced any weakness or any abnormal sensation, or decreased sensation in your, like in your legs? Um, no. Okay, have you experiencing any unintentional weight loss, any decrease in appetite or so, something like that? No. Okay, any episodes of diarrhea, painful red eyes, any skin abnormality, any skin pigmentation or itchy, something like that? No. Okay, that's great. Okay, can you please tell me, do you have any other content you see your GP regularly or uh, something like that? No. Okay, great. Have you had, have you had any surgeries previously? Yes, I had a surgery on this knee. I had a surgery okay. on this knee. When was that? A uh, few when years ago. That? Can't remember exactly okay. when I was playing for okay. Birmingham probably at that mm -hmm. time. Can't remember when was it. Okay, that's all right. So can you please tell me, do you take any medications or any other drugs? You want to tell me any allergies? I am not allergic to anything. And what was the other question? Okay. Uh, are you taking any medications? Uh, what kind of medications? Any sort of painkillers, any um, pills yeah, for okay. your pressure, yes, blood pressure, any know. other condition? No, no. That's no. it. Um, pretty much pretty well, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Do you mind if I ask a few personal questions? Yeah, go on. Okay, in conclusion, what do you do for a living? I'm a footballer. Okay, great. That's a good profession. So, do you drink or do you smoke? Uh, nope. Okay, so who else is with you at home? Um, I have a girlfriend. Okay, great. So, can you please tell me, uh, have you been experiencing any shortness of breath, any chest pain, any joint, other, any other joint pain, muscle pains? Uh, I told you something before, like that. You asked me this before, and I told you no. Okay. So, is there anything else you would like to tell me that I haven't asked you from your end? Uh, no, I'm just worried what it is. I had a similar thing a few years ago. I had an mm -hmm. operation. It okay. settled down. I'm just a bit worried why it just came okay. back. I can't play. Okay. I can't so, go to my gym mm -hmm. anymore. Right. It's affecting my life. I'm a footballer. Okay. I need to be on ground. Yeah, I can just appreciate your concern. So, can you please tell me what do you think? What might be causing you? What might be causing this problem? I don't know. That's what your I'm going to tell me. Right, and that's right. So, what's your biggest concern about your issue? Is it something like I had a meniscal tear a couple of years ago, which they repaired? I think is it the same thing again? Okay. Okay, we'll work on that. We'll, we need to do few more tests, tests, and need to discuss this with my consultant. We came to know that. I will get back to you on that thing. Okay. So, okay. what are you hoping us to do? Uh, what I'm hoping you to do? I don't know. Yes. Okay. Um, so you, you know, when you came, you, you came to us today. You must be having some hope. You must be having some plan. Like what? What we can do for you? I want you to tell me what's wrong with me with my knee. Okay. Okay. That's all right. Definitely, we'll go into tell something. Okay. That. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you. I would Bye. like to press. Yes. Okay. Can you please okay. summarize thank your case? Thank you. Okay. I would like to present my case today. I have taken history from a uh, twenty-five-year-old male. Who came with the complaints of left 28 year old pain? Who came with the complaints of left knee uh, pain? It is associated with the swelling. Patient experiencing pain as the day proceeds, as he's having some activities. Patient is a footballer by profession. So uh, he has observed some local changes in the foot like swelling and he's experiencing locking of the knee during getting up or during moving. Uh, so, what is your diagnosis? 
Faust. Okay, so my differential diagnosis is the meniscal injury, but at the same time, I would, I would also like to rule out other conditions like osteoarthritis, say, uh, secondary osteoarthritis to injury like this patient has been previously operated, and septic arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, um, uh, this cruciate ligament injury. So these will be the differential diagnosis. How should this patient be managed? So I would like to after the uh, after thorough examination of the both lower limbs and this uh, knees and joints above and below the knee, I would like to send some investigation, basically investigate like full blood count, uh, markers of inflammation, and do an X-ray of the joint AP and lateral view and compare with other view, other joint as well. And then after discussing it with my consultant and the orthopedician, uh, we can have. Uh, multiple options like uh, we can give we can manage this as quite conservatively or we need to go or more invasive things like conservatively we can advise patient to take uh, like painkillers starting from the uh, parastamol following the WHO later protocol of pain management and after that we can we advise patients for physiotherapy to strengthen his knee uh, some swimming bicycling or other exercises and refer to physiotherapist he can advise him some good exercises to strengthen the knee and muscles around the knee joint and what if the patient is not set yes please surgical alternatives yes ma'am a patient is not set we may need to go other like arthroscopy of the knee joint uh, and shaving of this uh, shaving of this knee joint we can go for in, intraarticular injections and if that's not also improving this condition we need to do the wedge resection or uh, alignment osteotomy in this patient. If it's going beyond that, we may need to go for the total knee replacement or partial knee replacement. That is the last resort. Do you think the patient would be able to play football in uh, six months or nine months? No, ma'am, because uh, he's not in a condition to play the football in the next six months or so. Okay, so okay, I have to counsel you. the patient yes. about that also. Yes. Thank you very much. Ma Thank you. Yes, my Thank concern. You Time you took two minutes. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yes, it was good. You covered everything, yes, so time. it's just the time. Yes, it's have the time. To bring it back. On that. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You know, you have to ask all questions, but. Yeah, but then yeah, from the other side there was like. From the other side. Yes, yeah, it some questions you couldn't uh, hear the answer, some she couldn't hear the reply, so yes, that's how it went. Okay, I'm giving the yes, margin. Once we're practicing every day, I hope that by the end of year, we will be able improve. to yes, meet the yeah, requirements. Hopefully. May. Yes, ma'am. Hopefully. Yes, thank you so much, both of you. Thank you, ma'am. Did you ask me about trauma? You told me like uh, I was playing. I didn't told say me about anything. like you were playing blood. I, I, mm, did you specifically ask me about trauma history and about family history? I can't remember you asking. No, me, but it might be I don't know. No, 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 no. Fam, family, fam, family history. I skip that. Yes, I skip that. Okay. Yeah, that was the only thing I think. Um. Yeah. Mm. Right. There are so good. many things. But, mm, the is good. Time is not allowing to. But I think it was a bit difficult. But yes. but to be honest, I didn't really know what history, what mm -hmm. is my underlying diagnosis. So I was like completely blank. Oh, why? Right, right. Uh, I gave right. the hint that the patient had the same injury a few years back and now it could be osteoarthritis. Because yes, like, yes ma'am. Yeah. I was I was about to make my diagnosis osteoarthritis. That, then the patient said, I am I'm experiencing the locking of the joints. Yeah. So I have to change my provisional, provisional diagnosis. Yeah, yes. that's why I asked you differential yes. diagnosis, yes. not the provisional yes. diagnosis. I didn't know that it was yes. arthritis because I thought it was 28 years old. So that's why I went for meniscal. So, Professional sorry, footballers, know. you know, start playing from the age of five. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in these patients who have previously operated in the secondary osteoarthritis is common. Yes. So, and the and the stem is like that. We yeah. have to make a diagnosis of secondary osteoarthritis. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, good. Thank so you. it was okay. It was good. It was good from Dr. Vajia also. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Timer have started and here is the question. Sorry. Yes, please.
so Right. If you have read and understood, kindly please tell me what are you looking at on uh, this is left cerebral arteriogram. Yes. Okay. If we begin from uh, the left hand side, can you please identify all the structures from A to F? B. This is the internal carotid artery. A, this is the medial cerebral artery. F, this is the anterior cerebral artery. E, this is the follicular branch, anterior cerebral artery. D, the posterior communication artery. Uh, not quite. Okay. All right. A is right. Uh, what did you say? What is A? The anterior cerebral artery. Right, middle cerebral artery. Middle cerebral artery. Yes. B, internal carotid artery. B is right, internal carotid artery. Yes. And then C? C. Lenticulo, tri branch of. Middle cerebral artery. Middle okay. cerebral artery. And then D? Posterior communication artery. Anterior cerebral artery. Anterior cerebral artery. E? Yeah. Conicular branch of the anterior cerebral artery. Yes. And uh, F? Anterior cerebral artery. Anterior cerebral artery. Yes, please. Good. And uh, on the right hand side, please. The ophthalmic artery. Yes, ophthalmic. Very good. B, please. B, the internal carotid artery. Yes, internal. Yes, and then C is the common carotid artery. Yes, it's also internal carotid artery, but it's okay. another. Uh, that was cavernous portion B, and this is the other. And then what about, sorry, and what about D? This is the anterior cerebral artery. Uh, see the shape? Shape is like this. So these are the pericolosal branches of anterior cerebral artery, yes. And then E, please. Internal carotid artery, uterus yeah. portion. See, it's curved onto itself. Okay. okay. Yes, uh, can you please tell me uh, what type of intracerebral hemorrhage this patient might have had? Subarachnoid hemorrhage. Okay, how does it present? Uh, why does it happen? What are the risk factors? Factor maybe for the patient has family history. Yes. Most likely has autosomal uh, dominant condition, ABKD, adult polycystic kidney disease. Okay, in what kind of syndrome would you expect this kind of uh, hemorrhage to occur? Adult polycystic kidney syndrome. A polycystic kidney syndrome, very good, yes. Okay, good. Can you please tell me all the branches of uh, in, uh, internal cerebral artery? Anterior choroidal artery, yes. and the anterior cerebral artery, and the medial cerebral artery, and the posterior communication artery. Can you please identify these structures from A okay. to E? Yes. D is the internal carotid artery. Uh, A, this is the anterior cerebral artery. D, medial cerebral artery.
Okay. C maybe of Sandu Khan three. E posterior communicative artery. All right, we are moving. Right. For, uh, we'll discuss at the end. Okay. Can you identify yeah. all the structures here from A to F, please? What is it? What are you looking at? This is the cerebral arteriogram. Okay. Magnetic resident angiogram showing the circle of Willis. Okay. Isn't it carotid? B is the yes. Yes, what are you looking B at? The anterior, B is the anterior communicating artery. Yes, what about A? B A, this is the internal carotid artery. Yes, C, P. D, this is the anterior cerebral artery. Yes, please. And D? D, medial cerebral artery. And E, the lateral artery. And F, posterior communicating artery. Okay. Can you please tell me here what this uh, arrow is pointing at? The medial cerebral artery. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry. What are you looking at here? Can you identify? Uh, the medial cerebral artery. Uh, arrows are here, okay. Which this one is this is the okay. middle cerebral artery okay and another arrow is here anterior cerebral artery right and the third arrow is here uh, internal carotid artery okay one arrow is here the right middle cerebral artery can you please tell me what are the signs of a medial uh, cerebral artery infarct how would the patient present there will be if uh, Aphasia, if it's in the dominant phase, there'll be contra hemiplegia in the contralateral side of the upper and lower limb, and also hemiplegia of the lower half of the face. Okay, can you please tell me what are the branches uh, that are given off before anterior cerebral artery? Uh, and uh, it uh, means the middle cerebral artery. So if there is any branch? The ophthalmic artery. Yes, very good. Can you please tell me from which foramen it uh, transmits? The carotid canal. In okay. the part of the temporal. Yes, and can you please tell me the course of vertebral artery? The vertebral artery, uh, it is arise uh, into the foramen magnum, yes. then for, uh, pass upward and forward uh, into the anterior surface of the middle of blancata. Uh, then join the other vertebral artery to form the basal artery. Okay, good. Can you please also tell me? Uh, right, I'm sorry. Question. Can you please tell me what you understand by the term blood-brain barrier and how does it work? Uh, blood barrier are uh, blood brain barrier is uh, uh, formed from the they the, the function that protect the brain from the toxin and prevent uh, toxin material to reach the brain it is permeable to the limit uh, soluble for material and impermeable to the water soluble content. So it consists of endothelial cells that line the capillaries of the brain and they differ from other endothelial capillary cells by the presence of side junction and that's yes. where they repel <laughs> molecules from passing through the capillary walls and it uh, blood brain barrier functions to maintain hemostasis and it only allows entrance of essential nutrients from the blood while uh, okay. yes preventing toxins from entering and it's lipid soluble and are permeable okay. okay can you please tell me uh, are all areas of the brain they are protected by the blood brain barrier 
if not then which area lies uh, uh, outside blood brain barrier the posterior part of the pituitary gland and part of yes. the middle of gata yes good because they are straight yes good okay all right uh, right giving the scenario what would be the first line of uh, investigation that you will carry out consider ct or mri okay then good. i will go for lumbar function okay good can you please tell me uh, which area is supplied by the internal carotid artery Supply uh, the the uh, brain the brain stem the okay. mid brain on the bones and the middle of lumbata and the medial cerebral hemisphere. It supplies the medial surface of the frontal and parietal lobes, anterior portions of basal ganglia, anterior limb of internal capsule, and majority of corpus callosum. Okay, you know internal carotid artery is divided into several segments. Can you name the segments and can you tell about their uh, characteristic? The internal. Uh, internal carotid artery, yes. It divided into seven segments. Each segment has separate name and function. I don't know. Okay, so it's like C1, cervical, C2, petrous. From, the, from depending upon the course, you know, C3 is lacerum and C4 is cavernous, C5 is clinoid, C6 is ophthalmic, and C7 is communicating. It's the terminal segment. So you can yeah. read, yeah, you can read more about it. Right. I'm just going through the questions because uh, when you were identifying, I couldn't keep up the pace. I'm sorry. Yes, this one you wanted to confirm, right? So we'll. Okay. Yes, anyone else would want to help you or? Because before we go ahead, we can maybe identify. Yes, anyone else? Confirm uh, what Dr. Mohammed is telling? Ma'am, is ma'am B internal carotid artery? Identify B. all and then we'll confirm. I'm just trying to bring out. Okay. Um, is, uh, according to me, it's also I think A is a and it's b is internal looks a looks and e is posterior communicating artery and a i think it's a middle silver artery uh, okay just wait like internal carotid artery then the petrous portion second division then a is the third segment i guess cavernous segment it's a c is then, the um, artery? sorry mm -hmm. For C, is it the ophthalmic artery? No, no. Why should ophthalmic artery in the posterior aspect? That should be anterior aspect. Okay. You can see the bony marks, the occipital bone here. It's the posterior aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Dr. Sandhya, what do you say? Oh, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. It's hard. Okay. Well, a no, is e basal. is posterior and inferior cerebral. Yeah. All right. A it's is basilar artery. Basilar artery. Is vertebral artery. Oh. C is muscular branch of vertebral artery. See, small muscular branch. Okay. okay. And D is superior cerebellar artery. And uh, E is, is anterior like, cerebellar artery. Anterior cerebellar artery. Anterior cerebellar artery. Mom, can you say it again, please? Yes, please. A is basilar artery. B okay. is vertebral artery. 
C is muscular branch of vertebral artery. See, this is vertebral artery and this is giving off one branch. And yeah. coming back to D, it's the superior cerebellar artery. Superior okay. cerebellar. And then E is anterior inferior cerebellar artery. So anterior coming off from anterior and inferior cerebellar. Okay. Um, so mom, I need yes. Slide. Next or the previous? Okay. Yes. No, no, no. The next one, not this one. A previous one. Yes. Is it different? Yes. Okay, uh, tell Dr. Sunday, we'll correct. Which one are you looking at on the right hand side or on the left hand side? No, not, not this slide, uh, the next one, the previous one from this one. No, 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 the other side. Yes, this is the first, okay. Oh, okay, second. And then this one we just discussed, and this, and this, yeah. and then this. No, 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 back, go back. Yes. Yeah, he said uh, that is a middle cerebral artery in this slide. No, that is a... No, it's not a middle one. Yes, he, he knows middle one. Yes, he knows he has to revise the whole chapter again. Okay. And then yes. uh, for the course of particular artery, I think they will show picture for all these uh, seven cervical, cervical particular. And they will ask to point the course of particular artery on uh -huh. each picture. Okay. Accordingly, from seven, which is none, then six, two, two, onto uh, the atlas, then what group is this? How did they enter before going back to the brain? Yeah. The score. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I could have done that. I could have, yeah, but I didn't have that one. I'll find one and, yeah. Good idea, yes. Right. Yes. Right, okay. Thank you so much. Here is the question. You have read and understood kindly tell me considering the critical care station how would you manage this patient yes i'm considering the scenario i would uh, like to manage the patient according to uh, this protocol uh, i will initially assess the airway so i'll talk to the patient and see if uh, he's able to communicate then uh, once i confirm that his airway is patent uh, next i'll move on to breathing i'll check the neck first uh, look for any obvious tracheal deviation then i'll inspect the chest i'll have a look at uh, the air entry uh, look for the chest movements if it's equal on both sides if the, all the seconds are moving equally um, then i would uh, palpate uh, for equal chest movements and i'll focus for any obvious uh, deficiency on each areas and then i will auscultate for equal breath sounds on each side uh, here considering this scenario i would uh, find that there's decreased breath sounds on the right side okay um, so I would uh, consider that um, an immediate possibility of attention pneumothorax post considering the recent procedure. Um, and I would have to act as an emergency and I would have to uh, consider a needle thoracostomy for this patient. Okay. Um, should I describe the procedure? How would or? you take care of the vitals? Heart rate is 123 and... Yeah, the heart rate is 123 and the patient is uh, at the moment uh, in respiratory distress. I yes. would uh, consider... 
a shortness of breath and uh, i would consider that there's a possibility of a pneumothorax in this case first okay um depending upon i mean depending upon the insertion findings of the trachea and uh, deviation in chest fan chest findings who would you involve in the management of this patient um i would involve the intensivist uh, itu intensivist um, considering that this patient is requiring a dialysis i would uh, involve the renal physician um the itu intens i mean uh, consultant um and the surgical consultant as well okay uh can you help me to read this extra please uh first i'll concern the details of the patient uh check that this patient this was extra have taken of so and so patient taken so and so date um i would check for the radiation and exposure moving on to the airway um um i can obviously see that there is a, a deviation of the uh, um the trachea to the left and mm -hmm. there is an obvious uh, compression of the right um, lung towards and there is a mediastinal shift towards the left hand side um uh, the uh, cardiac shadow is also displaced towards the left and the diaphragm is obviously uh, displaced downwards on the right hand side uh, the obvious diagnosis i would consider would be a tension pneumothorax yes in this case yes then uh, in this patient how would you did you tell me what are the signs of pneumothorax how would you assess that so in the case of a tension pneumothorax uh, the obvious signs would be obvious uh, a tracheal deviation a medias with a mediastinal shift towards the opposite side symptomatically the patient might be having tachycardia and uh, shortness of breath um, the, uh, they'll be having uh, features of hypoxia low oxygen saturation um, and uh, decreased air entry on the relevant side on the affected side uh um, because the uh, air is i mean the lung is compressed and displaced on towards the opposite side good okay can you name uh, what what are the different types of pneumothorax that you know of about um uh, based on the etiology it can be either a primary or a secondary pneumothorax okay. the primary pneumothorax in, in which there is no history of any trauma there's no any obvious cause uh, of pneumothorax and secondary is uh, if it's secondary to any trauma on the fractures uh and based on the anatomical type it could be a open or a closed pneumothorax again open pneumothorax which is having a communication towards the exterior or uh, towards one of the cavities and closes when there is no communication to either of the two uh and simple and attention uh, simple pneumothorax or attention pneumothorax is basically when um a simple pneumothorax is again a communicating pneumothorax towards one of the tracheal bronchial apparatus and as such there will be a free communication either towards the uh the respiratory tree or towards the exterior uh and tension pneumothorax is again when there is a, a one way valve connection towards either uh of the uh, air cavity what is the as... what is one important difference between a simple pneumothorax and tension pneumothorax a uh, tension pneumothorax is, is there is only a one way communication between the uh um the pneumothorax segment and the uh, it's it's an emergency cause yes, the air to accumulate yes but there will be cardiovascular compromise and patient will be in shock but not in simple in simple okay okay can yeah. you please tell me what are the boundaries of a uh, uh, safe triangle um um it's bounded anteriorly by the anterior axillary fold or the lateral pectoral fold posteriorly by the mid axillary line and uh, inferiorly by the fifth rib okay what are the indications of uh, inserting central line uh, when there is a need for a continuous monitoring of the electrolytes uh, if there is an indication for tpn uh, monitoring fluid balance if there is no obvious peripheral venous access uh, and failed multiple peripheral uh, venous cannulation attempts um for the patient if there's a need for a hemodialysis as also an indication of severe burns where we can't get good vascular access for the patient in, on those kind of conditions okay so what are the complications that you expect to see uh, with insertion? regards to complications insertion, yes. while insertion uh, you can actually have um, depending upon the side that could if it's left sided there could be a chylothorax uh, uh, injury towards the uh, chylothorax it could be arterial injury that could be venous injury it could be hematoma formation um bleeding uh, any neurovascular injury in that area um then once inserted it, uh, with long standing uh, catheter insertion there could be catheterated sepsis uh, deep venous thrombosis uh, infection yes. uh, etc can you tell um, me then obviously yes. pneumothorax uh, yes. again again that's with an the injury there could be pneumothorax that's yeah. the, that's the most immediate complication that you expect okay according to nice guidelines uh, what are the procedure or protocol to insert 
central line. Um, as per the NICE guidelines, the procedure is to insert the cannula under ultrasound guidance. Very good. Uh, okay. Followed by a post-operative radiograph to make sure that the catheter is in, inside the uh, yes. lumen. All right. Can you tell me, please, uh, what is the what is the indi indications of removal of central uh, line? Indication of removal when the acute uh, requirement for uh, this is over. Acute insertion for, uh, requirement for the uh, cannula insertion is over, and uh, um, when the patient has the the need for insertion. I mean, the central line uh, insertion is over, and. Uh, uh, or if there's any chance of uh, catheter sepsis or there's yes. a cessation of cardiac monitoring uh, and the patient is fit for discharge. Can you tell me, you talked about sepsis, then uh, can you tell me how would you ensure uh, that uh, to prevent the central line infection? So while it starts basically while the time of insertion, uh, when when we are inserting the, uh, the central line catheter, we, we should uh, basically perform uh, we should uh, look at universal precautions. Uh, sorry, we should uh, perform proper hand hygiene. We should apply the local uh, uh, sc uh, skin preparation agent. Uh, we should pr uh, perform the entire procedure under aseptic non-touch technique. Um, the, the person, individual who's performing the technique should be uh, competent to do the procedure and he should be experienced and uh, he should wear all the uh, gown and gloves and cap and mask and perform the procedure under aseptic uh, precautions and the catheter should be uh, placed according to the proper uh, uh, procedure and be removed after the indication is uh, uh, is finished or after the indica as far as the indication is met. So it should not be left in situ for a long time. Okay, one last question. Can you please tell me the surface marking of internal jugular vein? Um, and it's from the ear lobule to the uh, medial end of the clavicle. Okay. Why this landmark is important? For the cannulation of the uh, external jugular vein. Very good. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, I, 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 is the question done, ma'am? Yes. Ma'am, I had a doubt regarding this because I'm actually presenting this right now. Um, uh, when we go about with the presentation, do we like uh, ABCD protocol? Uh, um, as far as we find, I mean, the guidance says that we have to find, if we find a fault in one of the problems like if I'm going with this we go from airway then breathing and we find something's wrong with breathing you deal with it and then you come back and then go ahead so will we directly I mean like I said like I was explaining today uh, will we be presented with it as in the, with the examiner show or say that this is the findings that you're finding so what you will do with it uh, it uh, will be according to ABCD protocol no ma'am I understand they, that what I'm, yeah, no, what I meant maybe is, I'm not understanding your question no, what I meant is when I'm saying uh, breathing, I'll inspect the next and I'll check for any tracheal deviation. Yes. I'll look for chest movement. So will the examiner will be like, uh, okay, this, this, the trachea is deviated towards the right side. They, they will ask you, how would right you assess side. breathing in post pneumothorax patient? So patient has pneumothorax now and you will mm. be asked to, uh, okay, how would you assess breathing in that patient? So then you'll okay. tell about the, all the parameters that includes respiratory rate with them oxygen saturation, okay. drifting of trachea, chest movements, if it's okay, symmetrical so, or not, like, and then respiratory, use of respiratory muscles, use of accessory muscles, then use of, uh, then you'll tell about the skin colors, nail beds, uh, percussion, auscultation, like everything that you everything, would yeah, consider yeah. in real life. We'll talk mm. about that. Okay. Yes, Dr. Ishpat is also telling. Yeah. Yeah, good. Right, good. Okay. Yes, it was good. Uh, yes, yeah, some questions you could answer very well. Some uh, you had to think and recapitulate. So maybe one reading, uh, it will help. Yeah. Like the last one when I asked you, how would you prevent infection? So you had to think. Sure. It. So yeah, so once you read and uh, hopefully I think it will be excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you God. so much. Starting timer, and here is the question.
Right. If you have read and understood, can you begin your station? Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, am I on to the ICU register, please? Um, yes, please. Hello. Who's speaking, please? Okay, so. I say yes, please. Uh, I'm Who's Dr. speaking, Sunday, please? Uh, I'm Dr. Sondi, one of the surgical doctors. So, is it a good time to talk? Yes, please. You can go on. Okay. Thank you for talking to me. So uh, today I'm calling uh, to ask for advice and uh, to request an ITU bed for a 76 year old lady uh, who was just brought in to A and E uh, and is about to undergo uh, urgent uh, laparotomy. So okay. uh, this uh, so patient. You... Okay. So continue, please. So good. Yeah. So please just give me a background about the patient. So. I know what's happening. Okay. So uh, she's a 20 year old lady. So who had a uh, issue of the COPD and she's on steroids. And then mm -hmm. she was brought in to the uh, by ambulance uh, with sudden uh, abdominal pain. And uh, she's about to undergo uh, a urgent operatory surgery. So and she'll be leading uh, okay. ITU bed after the surgery. Okay. So um, about this patient, what's your assessment, you said? Yeah, okay. our oh. assessment is that uh, mm -hmm. she needs urgent in uh, laparotomy because she might be having a, uh, maybe a come to work. Uh, she might be having a maybe a, a peritonitis also. So that is why we're taking up to the station um, to do urgent surgery. So she like might be having what? Yeah, I, I didn't get that. She might be having what? Yeah, so she might be having a uh, intradominal uh, sepsis, peritonitis. Uh, what do you? Uh, okay. Uh, where do you think the source is from, please? What What are your uh, differentials to say? Yeah, of course. Uh, for this woman, so because of the sudden uh, intradominal pain, of course, so it could be maybe on perforated fiscus or maybe uh perforation of the um bowel power like bowel so and that is why we want to operate to see and um, so that we can correct the source okay um was she on any um medication uh for say NSAID or mm -hmm. anything for any pain before yes she's on steroids uh, but not on any NSAID no Yes, yeah, sure. So you will refer back to the chat. Oh, okay. I will check uh, the patient history, so and I will get back to you. About that. Okay. What fluid resuscitation would you do for this patient? Oh, okay. So basically, I will give this patient the uh, IV crystallis solution. Um, that's a atom solution at the rate of a twenty uh, milligram per kg. So over 15 to 30 minutes, and I will observe the patient on uh, respond to this challenge after. Okay. Have you checked the hemoglobin recently? How much is it? Uh, I don't have that information right now. Sorry for that. Uh, I will check, and uh, if there's none, then I will try to run the lab test for that. And get back okay. to you. Have you done any ultrasound? What have you seen? Uh, not at the moment, so but I'm going to um, order that now, and I will get back to you getting that. So, what three of things are you going to do or suggest? For this okay, patient? so for this patient, of course, this, the most important one is the fast ultrasound. Then, uh, uh, because the patient is surgery immediately, so I think as uh, the patient does not need CT scan right now, so we just want to do the surgery as soon as possible. Then, after we can. Uh, know uh, or discuss uh, the patient case with my consultant and we can know the, uh, the next step of management. Okay, since the patient is a known case of COPD, so what complications are you keeping in your mind or expecting to see? Okay, so in this patient, so uh, I'm keeping in my mind she might uh, develop after operation, she might develop atelectasis, uh, pneumonia, chest infection, or even uh, respiratory failure. So because of this, uh, I would like uh, to arrange a um, 
to physiotherapy, referee therapy after operation, and I would like to encourage a early mobilization for the patient and a sitting upright after operation as soon as possible. Have you confirmed, it. yes, if the patient has taken a steroid inhaler earlier today? Uh, I don't have that information, sorry, so I will confirm that and I'll get back to you. Yes. That. Because uh, post-operatively, uh, you would have to keep in your mind you would need uh, IV steroid. Yeah. Yes. Would you go, Dr. Fatima? Ask. Mm. Okay. 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 I think you. I think you've gone far now. Hello. Yes. And I, no, I was saying I think you've already gone far asking him about the steroids. Yes. Um, How much oxygen would you give? So okay. So for this patient, uh, yes. I would like to give a uh, uh, FiO2 of about twenty-six because she's having COPD in order to uh, allow the opposite drive for this patient. So, but I would like to give it to century mask. Yes, how? How would you give oxygen? I said to uh, uh, century mask. Non-breathable mask, yes, okay. Non Can you please tell me what are the criteria for uh, ITU admission? Because you want to send the patient to ITU. Does okay, the so patient the, meet yeah. the criteria? Yes, because now she's, uh, she has COPD and there is an impending danger of a respiratory failure. And also she's having a, uh, a severe abdominal pain, which might denote uh, maybe peritonitis or sepsis. So which are, and these are indications for ICU, ITU in, um, admission. That's motor organ failure that is reversible. And also severe illness like in peritonitis or sepsis. And also she will need a, a close monitoring, one-on-one -on -one monitoring after operation. And then she might also need a, a what do you call ionotrope or even a intravenous monitoring of the central venous system. And also she needs a okay, maybe she might need an invasive uh, ventilation after due to COPD. Yes. Okay, just suppose there's only one bed available and one asthmatic patient is coming. Uh, what would you do? Well, uh, I will still proceed with this uh, with the surgery because it's an emergency, and yes. uh, uh, I would like to uh, allow the bed manager to discuss um, yes. to find a way of a creating space for this patient because she needs uh, the ITU admission as soon as possible due to her condition. Okay, uh, if you have taken the ABGs of this patient, how would you expect them to be? Okay, so for this patient, due to her current condition, I would expect her to have a, a metabolic uh, acidosis. Very good. Okay. Yes. Can you repeat the Can you repeat the advice I've given you? Okay, so uh, you asked me uh, the kind of a uh, fluid uh, therapy I'm going to give to this patient. Then uh, uh, whether if uh, the patient has, has been on any drug, especially steroid. Yes. Yes. And uh, whether she has taken any steroids today, and uh, the or the course of steroid uh, therapy up during operation and after operation, and also how I'm going to make um, bed available for this patient. Yes. And how to avoid uh, the complication of COPD. Very good. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Good. All right. Timer is here, and here is the question. Right, if you have read and understood, kindly begin your examination.
Yes, I will enter the examination hall. I will wash my hand and uh, I'll greet, I'll greet the patient, and I'll introduce myself. After introducing myself, I'll tell the patient that uh, I am <clears throat> going to examine her stoma, and that uh, after that I'll check the identity of the patient uh, by asking the name and age of the patient, and then I will describe a brief discussion like uh, I'm going to examine this stoma that includes the looking at the stoma and also feeling it and doing relevant tummy examination and. Uh, I will seek permission for the examination. Then, in a standing position, I will ask the patient to uh, <clears throat> uh, to lift up his gown and uh, and expose his uh, expose her tummy her. and. Uh, Yes, ma'am. Expose her tummy, and after that, I'll ask the patient. Uh, at first, I will ask the patient to remove the stoma bag first. If the patient can't do, I'll help help her. And after removing the stoma bag, uh, I will ask the patient to face on the left side on her on her left side and uh, cough a little bit. I'll see if there is any evidence of uh, evidence of parastomal hernia or not. And after that, uh, I'll ask the patient to lie on the couch, and uh, the couch should be flat. And after that, uh, at first, I will put put on some gloves uh, for this station and after putting gloves I'll check first the stoma content that it is more liquid or more solid and after that uh, after checking the stoma bag content, I'll quickly look over, uh, quickly go for the inspection of the tummy, uh, especially of the abdomen, and also the stoma corner surrounding skin condition. I'll look for any scar over there, uh, any, uh, and I'll also check the genitalia if there is any absence of uh, absence of anal canal or not. And I'll also the his skin uh, inspect the skin condition around the stoma if there is any evidence of infection, inflammation, and also. If there is any evidence of any necrosis of or not any if skin excoriation or not after doing the inspection, I'll go for the palpation. I'll ask. I'll uh, uh, after. Um, <clears throat> I will check the temperature at first uh, and then I'll check the tenderness around the stoma by looking into face of the patient. Then I'll check if there is uh, the lumen of the stoma, if it is double lumen or single lumen, like it is loop or in, in dialostomy first. And after that, I'll also check the patency of the stoma by putting a finger towards it. And I will also check if there is any spouting uh, over the spouting through from the stoma or not. And after checking that, <clears throat> I will uh, I'll check. Uh, and the really, I, I have already done uh, the uh, genitalia examination, and then I'll do the relevant abdominal examination. Uh, after I'll do the superficial palpation, I will do the uh, in nine different quadrant region, if possible. Then I'll go for uh, the deep palpation. Uh, then I'll check the left uh, deep palpation of the left kidney, also spleen, and deep palpation of the uh, right kidney, if possible. And also I'll try to palpate the liver. And after doing that, uh, I'll go for um, uh, uh, I'll go for any evidence of um, any evidence of systemic examination, like I'll check the hands if there is any evidence of any uh, peripheral stigmata of the abdominal disease, like clubbing, colonical, econochia, and also I'll check uh, check uh, check the uh, window chest of the hand. I'll check the eye if there is any evidence of pallor and also oral hygiene. And also after that, I'll check uh, the, if there is any presence of ankle edema or not, and I'll then check uh, if there is any calf muscle pain or not. And after doing that, I'll just to help the patient to dress, I'll greet the patient. If, if she needs any help or not, I'll wash my hand and I'll complete my examination. Okay, you still have uh, two minutes, so I'll yeah. uh, I'll help you to complete. Uh, did you check the health of the stoma? How was yes, it in looking it. like uh, it was pink, necrotic, or okay? Then how would you yes, make sure if the output was high or low from the stoma? Uh, I checked the stoma bag, ma'am. I didn't ask about the history of this patient. Like I checked the activities ileostomy. I think the out uh, the yes. uh, content would be more liquid high, in there. Yes. And yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then uh, did you make sure if uh, stoma was retracted or collapsed? How would you ensure no. that? Ma'am, I then... asked the patient to uh, to cough at the beginning, ma'am. Okay, I missed. Okay, is there is in parastomal, yeah, parastomal hernia or any flush? Any okay, uh, did you well. remove the bag and did the digital stoma examination? Yes, ma'am. I removed the bag at the very beginning and I checked the stoma content first, then I just to see the uh, and, the and any sten stenosis. Did you yeah, trans illuminate the mucosa? To see for no, no, ma'am. I didn't trans illuminate yes. it because there was no evidence of hernia, that's why, ma'am. Yeah, but like uh, for the mucosa for ulceration. 
one can do okay and then at the end you have to reattach the bag and then you can yes ma'am that thing i didn't do the reattachment okay. yes ma'am right uh, all right okay time i still have but okay i'll ask the questions how would you consider uh, what type of stoma patient has so what is the classification of stoma yeah, in this case uh, there like the classification would be like uh, it may be uh, colostomy or ileostomy according to the site of the stoma or according to the mechanism of the stoma and also it can be loop ileostomy or in ileostomy or it may be a uh, loop colostomy or in colostomy ma'am okay one you are classifying according to the site then yes, there is another classification temporary mm -hmm. temporary and permanent and then yeah. there is another loop versus end and yes, ma yes yes okay so these are the three types all right can you name a few complications of stoma please yes ma'am there may be uh, infection parastomal hernia necrosis and screen Only aspiration classify them in early and late and then tell me please Okay, ma'am. Uh, early and late, uh, uh, in case of early complication, there may be infection, there may be yes. uh, slippage uh, of the uh, ligature of the stoma, uh, stoma, fix, uh, fi uh, stoma fixation, there may be skin, uh, uh, there may be skin uh, hypersensitivity to the stoma adhesives, and also uh, uh, there may be, in, uh, uh, there may be, uh, and in, uh, in the late, actually, ma'am, there may be uh, uh, stoma necrosis and also stoma parastomal hernia. Yes, and even fistula formation, obstruction, stenosis yes, of the stoma. So these are all the late complications. Okay. Uh, when stoma is formed, how do you confirm the patency of the stoma? Um, I can confirm the patency by introduction of uh, finger and also I can confirm the patency if there is any uh, uh, by checking the output of the fistula, ma'am. Uh, output okay. of the stoma. Okay. Yeah. All right. If output is high, what electrolyte, electrolyte imbalance would you expect? If output is uh, high, ma'am, there may be, uh, uh, as it is a ilostomy, ma'am, uh, there may be loss okay. of... Uh, uh, loss of uh, like the hot the uh, substance that is absorbed in the terminal ileum that may be rapid loss of that uh, uh, the that things like uh, there may be loss of more fluid loss of uh, more sodium chloride and also loss of uh, loss of calcium and uh, yeah um, and fats fat soluble vitamins okay calcium okay all right good just eight seven seconds are left can yeah what more question I can ask? Um, you answered everything. Maybe the position. No, you've already told me that you'll examine the patient in standing position. So yes. Okay. Uh, when stoma is formed, what are the things that you have to consider? One last question, please. Bell has gone, but still, I want to know. When stoma is formed, ma'am, at first I have yes. to consider like uh, for what purpose I am doing the stoma. Like it yes. may be a cause of uh, uh, acute condition, like uh, if there is acute obstruction, like in the colon, it may be a diverting colostomy. It can be uh, due to any infective procedure, like a, a heart a heartman procedure. And in case of uh, in case of like uh, panproctocolectomy or total colectomy, and uh, in that case we can do an ileostomy for this patient. And ileostomy is mainly we do in the right leg for some and for colostomy we will do that in the left iliac fossa and after uh, during doing the stoma actually we have to uh, at first make a region and uh, measure the appropriate site of the lumen opening Good. and uh, yes. uh, otherwise it can it can cause obstruction or stenosis of the stoma in the future so we have to at first check that and then i have to uh, the terminal portion of this uh, of this uh, GI, uh, GI tract at first we have to evert this and we have to make fix this with uh, uh, with the uh, overlying skin first and also in the deep tissue so that the stomach cannot be cannot be reversed inwards so these things uh, we have to check yes. that and we have uh, to check the patency of the stomach yes. from the very beginning and also output yes and then uh, it should be within the rectus abdominis muscle away from the belt line it should be visible to the patient. Uh, 
and it should yes, be supplied with good vasculature so blood supply when yes, you're inside the rectus abdominis yeah, yes I forgot that. very good thank you right good yes yes please Right. If you have read and understood, can okay. you begin your examination? Okay. You have six minutes. Okay, I'll yes. okay, I'll enter the room. Uh, I'm Dr. Nadim, one of the surgical candidates. Uh, I'm supposed to examine uh, your hand and forearm. Mm, uh, I'll look and move your hands and fingers and also do some special tests. So if you have any pain, just tell me beforehand. And uh, 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 if you feel discomfort, during the examination, you can stop me. Is that okay with you? Yes, I carry on. Right. So after that, I'll uh, place the uh, uh, I'll uh, tell the patient to expose Good. Um, the forearms uh, above the elbow, up to the elbow, and place both the hands on on a pillow. Good. Um, after that, I'll look at uh, the affected hand first, uh, and we'll look at the uh, sh shape. Uh, or any swelling or deformity of the fingers or uh, uh, the wrist joint or any visible nodules on the elbow and any uh, scar marks or discoloration or any uh, vessels, visible vessels. <clears throat> After that, um, I'll uh, feel with the help of back of my uh, you know, hand the temperature um, of the uh, fingers and the um, forearm and also looking at the face of the patient to see for tenderness if there is any and also palpating for the uh, any nodules and any uh, voucher nodes or uh, herbardon nodes uh, in the uh, joints or any uh, splinter hemorrhages in the nails or genuine region. And uh, after that, I'll tell the patient that I'll uh, 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 palpate the uh, joints of the fingers to see any tenderness in our distal and uh, proximal interphalangeal joints, the uh, metacarpophalangeal joints and the wrist joint. And then we'll also uh, move the fingers uh, and the hand laterally, medially, flexion, extension, uh, passively and actively both. After that, I will tell the patient to grip my uh, finger or pen and uh, after that uh, pincer movement uh, with the thumb and for, for from and sign uh, I will put a paper between the thumb and the uh, index finger and if uh, the thumb doesn't bend then it will be negative sign. I will also tell the patient to uh, resist adduction of the fingers and abduction of the fingers uh, by putting my fingers uh, between the fingers of the uh, patient. Uh, I will also mm, tell the patient to uh, tell me if there is any pain by doing the uh, trinalis test, if there is any radiation of pain in the palm, and also prayer sign and phalanx test uh, for any uh, symptoms if they occur. And uh, I'll also uh, uh, touch a cotton bud on the forehead or uh, forearm of the patient and will tell him to close the, tell her to close the eyes and uh, uh, to tell me if she feels uh, it. So for radial now, I will 
uh, attach it in the uh, web space for media and on the index finger and for ulnar nerve on the uh, small finger little finger sorry and i will also look for sensation on the medial and lateral aspects of the palmar aspect uh, laterally for the median and medially for the ulnar nerve how uh, would you do the fallen that, test on the patient fallen test i'll uh, uh, tell the patient to uh, uh, flex the wrist mm, with fist and uh, mm, forcibly and uh, against resistance so if there is uh, any sensation of tingling or uh, pain uh, in the palm area then it will be a positive fallen test okay how would you carry out the tingle test dial tap the area on the volar yes. aspect yes. of the wrist joint yes. on the flexor retinaculum over the flexor retinaculum and if there is any sensation of tingling or pain it will be positive okay after that i'll uh, mm, look for any tender nodules on the uh, interphalangeal elbow. joints and elbow extensor elbow. surface yeah. we'll also examine the uh, mm, contralateral hand and uh okay. will cover the patient thanks the patient uh, you're already after. thinking uh, can you please yeah. tell me how would you make sure if uh, patients palmar and dorsal intrusia are intact uh so for that i did the adduction and uh, abduction of the finger yes okay good how would and, you make uh, sure sorry yes. I, i i just forgot one thing uh for distal interphalangeal joint flexion yes i'll put my fin fingers uh, just beneath the uh, distal interphalangeal joints and for the uh, flexor digitorum superficialis function i'll uh, keep the neighboring fingers mm, blocked while allowing only uh, the finger to be tested to flex okay good good now you can uh, summarize your case please Okay, I have examined this uh, lady, 55 year old lady. Mm. If the positive signs uh, were there, then I will say that uh, there was no visible deformity or swelling uh, or uh, erythema, uh, and uh, there was no tenderness on fingers or nail uh, joint or the forearm, and no nodules were uh, palpated. Uh, Tenor test was positive, and phalen test was also positive. While uh, all the sensations of ulnar nerve, median, and uh, radial nerve, uh, along with the uh, so what moments, was your differential uh, diagnosis? Uh, it may be uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, yes. secondary to diabetes mellitus, obesity, yes. uh, female gender, rheumatoid arthritis history, yes. uh, any previous trauma. Mm, you uh, and you will have some drugs. Would you do to confirm uh, to confirm your diagnosis or to complete your examination? I I do electromyographic studies and uh, nerve conduction studies, and if needed, also mm, do uh, the examination of upper joint and special neck joint. Uh, and neurovascular and, uh, examination. Full neurovascular, neurovascular examination. And okay, what investigations? MRI. Yes. Okay, what should MRI be the treatment? The yes. what should be the treatment treatment from uh, uh treatment will be from uh, conservative to mm, uh, more invasive so uh, we may use splints uh, rest elevation compression bandages uh, and uh, weight loss mm, with pain killers and exercises with physiotherapy mm, and if they uh, do not work then uh, we can go for carpal tunnel uh, decompression which may be laparoscopic or more invasive open surgery very good okay one last question please why would you ask for electromyography in nerve conduction study okay just to uh, rule out uh, uh, if uh, uh, the problem is uh, to localize the problem like different nerves velocities or nerve conduction they will be compared and it will guide us regarding the uh, level of entrapment or uh, lesion very good thank you 
थैंक यू थैंक यू